Welcome to Busy Bee Living. Today we are going to show you how we incorporated this radio arm saw with this miter saw. Morning. I know. I didn't even do my hair yet. But oh, I thought I'd get out here and get after it. I didn't film this yesterday when I started it. If you remember my wall, I had a workbench here, workbench here, miter saw here, workbench, and that radio arm saw was actually over here where the drill press is at. So to get more shop space, uh, just to kind of incorporate, well, we all want more shop space, right? But I started rearranging some tools around to maximize that space. But also, I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to hook up the dust collection system because we're finally going to address that. It's been needed for years and it just sits there. So this spring, I'm going to hook that all up. But what we did was we pulled the cabinet out here. We pulled this cabinet out slid it out, put the radio arm saw one in there. So today what we need to do is we need to get the top made for this, as well as the fence, get the saw lined up fence wise. And then once that's lined up, we're gonna put the miter saw here and line up the miter saw fence to this fence. So it'll be all one line. So be crisp and clean. So that's the plan. First I'm gonna finish my cup of coffee. shop projects okay now to start off we need to remake the deck for the radio arm saw so we're just going to take the existing piece that we had already on that cabinet and we're going to place it onto the radio arm saw we're going to cut it roughly to the maximum depth of the actual tabletop now this piece is going to be eventually split into three pieces but we're just going to cut it down here so we can manage it a little bit easier when we go through this process now when you're marking this just give yourself that little indication mark so you know which side to put the saw blade on so you don't make a mistake and make more scrap now with that mark put into its place we can come over to the table saw and cut our top down to the proper dimension now our next step in constructing the tabletop for the radio arm saw is to cut it where the fence will go. But to get that measurement, because we have a sliding miter saw here, we want to put the miter saw down to see the maximum depth it can go back and still be able to function completely. Now this will give us the lineup where we can put the radio arm saw's fence. Now just bring up a fence where you're going to line it up. Make sure that it's square to the miter saw's fence. And then make an indicating line where we're going to make the cut to get the first piece, the front piece, of the radial arm saw's table. Once again, we'll just head on over to the table saw and cut it down to its final dimension. Now before moving forward, we're going to just want to double check to make sure that we had our measurement right. So just by putting the piece down, and then we're going to go ahead and place the old fence that we had previously, just to make sure that it's going to line up with that miter saw's fence. And as you can see, it does, so we're good to go. And we can move on to cutting now the top of that front piece. Since we already have that blade set, go ahead and make that cut now and then you can make sure that it's accurate and it fits directly on top of the front piece. Now next we're going to create the fence for the radio arm saw and you can make this to your preference whether height and width. I like to make it a little bit thicker so it's sturdier so it won't 
flex or anything like that. You do have some pressure behind from the back plate, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. But I just used a piece of three quarter inch ply and then I added the hardy board to the front so it would match the rest of the tabletop. Now that we have the fence main and the front plate, we want to take a measurement for the back plate. Now this back plate will be slightly smaller than this measurement that you take because there's two pins that actually press it up against the fence and push it and secure that fence between the front plate and the back plate. Luckily we had a piece of cutoff from all the material that we've been using that was the perfect width. Now that we know everything's going to come into proper alignment, we need to secure the radio arm saw down to the cabinet. So all we did was we made indication marks where we're going to pre-drill and these will accept the four bolts to hold the radio arm saw down to the cabinet. Now that we have those pre-drilled, we can reposition the radio arm saw back into the place that we had it, making sure that it's in the proper area, and we can secure it down with the bolts. Now this could take a little while, but we have a trick. Now our air tool helped speed up this process, but you don't wanna take it all the way through. So you just wanna take it down just till maybe a couple of turns left and then come back and hand turn those down so we don't strip them out. Now we wanna glue up our tops to the laminate. These are just hardy board. I like to put it on top of my table tops because then I can pop it off real quick and easy and it doesn't ruin my whole table if I spill something on it like an epoxy or something like that. But we're gonna glue these up, put some weight on it and come back when it's all nice and dry. Now with our tabletops all made, we can put them into position and then we just put some weight on top of it because I'm gonna pre-drill below. Now you could have done this beforehand when the radio arm saw was free. I didn't think of that. Luckily I have this little nice little handy right angle drill. So if you're watching this and you don't have that, you're gonna wanna do this before securing that radio arm saw down to the cabinet. Now like everything in my shop, it's always built with scraps and leftovers and we do some digging through tons of hardware that's been collected over many years in my grandfather's shop. But we finally find some washers and screws so we can secure the front tabletop to the radio arm saw's base. Now you can see that added weight also comes in handy when you're trying to insert these screws to the table. Now we just give a little quick check to make sure it's secured. And once we've determined that, we can put the fence into its place and then that back plate in there. And now we're gonna want to start tightening down those two little bolts in the back. And this is what presses that back plate up against the fence and secures the whole thing down. Now with it assembled, we can check to make sure that it's gonna line up with the miner station. So now we got our tabletop secured and attached up front, and then the back portion and the fence are actually pressure fitted into place, so they're in here. So now it's time to square up the blade to the fence and the table. So first we're going to address the table. What we just do is we bring our square here, and we wanna bring it up to the blade, and see how we have some light shining through there. We shouldn't have any light. Now you wanna make sure you're not on a tooth or something like that, but it's significantly off, which is understandable. We've been moving this saw around quite a bit. So what we have to do is we have to loosen these up and then we can pivot this into a perfect 90 
to the table. So first we just remove that handle so we can get better access to those four little screws. Now you just want to loosen these, you don't want to completely remove them. Just a quick little turn just slightly loosens that motor so we can start pivoting it. And just hold your square up to it until you don't see any daylight and then tighten it down. Now see we got no light. So now that we know that the blade is perpendicular to the table, we want to check to make sure that it's true to the fence as well. So what we're going to go do here is we're actually going to drop the saw down and run it across here as it's right up against the fence just to double check that. Now you can see, bring that right in there, run that blade right out. Okay, so we got lucky there and our saw blade is square to the fence, but if yours is not, that's where you can start shifting and making adjustments to the fence here. And that'll help you get this blade squared up to the fence. So now with everything aligned, we can add the saw blade guard back on there and we can go ahead and make a quick cut. And if everything was lined up properly, we'll end up with a nice square Peace. So now we can turn our attention now to the miter saw and this is much easier than the radio arm saw because we don't have to construct the fence itself. So we just take a nice straight edge and we can line it up, push up so the miter saw fence is lined up directly in line with the radio arm saw and now we can secure the miter saw down to its station. Now once again, we're just going to make a quick test cut here to make sure we're all nice and square. Nice. So that is the completion of the radio arm miter saw combo station. We were able to get the radio arm saw redialed in, squared to that fence, and then that fence lined up with our miter saw so we can make repetitive cuts through this station and each tool will work in unison with each other. I know a lot of people have phased out radio arm saws. I've always been in a shop with one. And really I only use it for cross cutting on pieces that are just not safe to use on a, a table saw. And even you know with those miter gauges, it can be dangerous. Really the only way to replace this with the table saw is to make a cross cut sled, which one day it might come, but I just always love having the radio arm saw in the shop. Also by moving the radio arm saw to the left side of the miter station, we are able to get our big drill press over here, which that was just on floor space, constantly wheeling around and if we needed the extra space and it it's not light it's it's a heavy heavy boy so having a dedicated spot for it over here is definitely going to help out with just shop usage and space now some of the things that i know are going to come up in the comments that weren't filmed were the t-track systems i did that in the original build of this station i have 24 feet of it over there over here and another 48 feet of it on the other side of the radio arm saw. The question I know I'm gonna get is why I did not continue it through the radio arm saw deck itself. And the reason why is we can just use the radio arm saw fence itself with a quick clamp and a stop block there, and we can continue this little two feet area over here with that 
and it, if it goes past, then we can incorporate the stop block system we have here for the extra six feet the other way. So it's gonna keep everything in line, and this is just gonna be nice, quick, and easy, and I don't have to worry about it being in the radio arm saw area. Now in the future, we're going to be adding a drawer underneath the radio arm saw for anything that I need for the miter station or the radio arm saw itself. We're going to be adding also some drawers over on this 24 inch cabinet here. Those are going to be used to store all my drill bits because my drill press now has a permanent home and I won't be searching all around the shop for them. They'll be right there and ready to go. And then the 48 inch over there, I think we're going to get a metal cabinet and slide it in there because those things just had so many drawers and <laughs> that's why I left it in the video when I was looking for those washers digging through all those little jars from my grandfather's old shop majority of the time I can never find the one I'm looking for and I end up just going to the hardware store and buying one so by having that organized it'll actually save me in the long run not only time but also money because hardware is not cheap right now so if you guys have any questions that I haven't addressed on the uh, radio arm saw, miter saw combo station, leave a comment below. Also, if you have any recommendations on what else we could add to improve it, we'd love to hear from it. And then we can actually see if we can incorporate it into this miter saw station. So I just want to take the time to thank you for watching the video. If it's your first time here, we'd love to earn your subscription as it really does help us out as a channel. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for your support throughout the years. It's really helped us grow as a channel and we really, truly appreciate it. So thank you very much. And then until next time, thanks for buzzing by. Now you go make some dust.